Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Shack. We are multiplying whole numbers and decimals by 10, 100 and 1000. And the really, really important thing you need to think about for the, this lesson, and in fact for the rest of the week, is the place value table. Can you have a look at what it says at the bottom here? It says, if you're multiplying by 10, all digits jump one column to the left. If you're multiplying by 100, then all digits jump two columns to the left. If you're multiplying by 1,000, then all digits jump three columns to the left. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. Okay, what about the following example? Four thousand two hundred and seventy nine multiplied by ten. Well, let's get that number in the place value table. Four thousand two hundred and seventy nine. Now, what does it say? If we're multiplying by 10, it says all digits jump one column to the left. So let's have a look. It's going to jump one column to the left. But what happens, do you think, where that space has been created? We have to put a place value holder in there. So what's the number come, become now? It's become 42,000. 790. So you might be thinking to yourself now, oh, well, if you multiply by 10, you just add a zero. Well, you kind of do. You don't add it in the same way that we normally do. You could say you put a zero on the end. You don't add it as such. You just put a zero on the end. And that is true to a certain extent for whole numbers. Okay, in the sense that you didn't need to put the decimal point in that number, okay? But what happens if we look at a different number, okay? So what happens if we now look at this number? So what's that number? 42.79. What happens if we multiply that by 10? Well, again, all digits jump one column to the left. So let's jump it. What's the answer? It is 427.9. So we haven't really added a zero there, have we? But it has moved in the place value table. It's jumped one column to the left in the place value table. And we get 427.9. Okay, what about multiplying by 100? Well, let's take this number and multiply it by 100. 4.279. And multiply it by 100. Well, what does it say here? It says multiplying by 100, all digits jump two columns to the left. So two columns. One, two. And we get that our answer is 427.9. That's our answer when we multiply it by 100. Okay, what about this number now? I'm going to make uh, a bigger number now. I'm going to take 42,790 and I'm going to multiply that by 10. 42,790 and multiply it by 10. And you can see that all digits jump one column to the left, including 
completely not zero. But what do we have to do? We have to put a place value holder in there. So what, what does it become now? Well, it's become 427,900. So 427,000. So the comma is now here. 900. Okay, I'm going to change the number a little bit now. So I'm going to say just these two digits here. And let's put a number here like this. So what would you normally have to do here? Well, you'd normally have to put a zero here. Okay, so this is 0 0.79 now, 0 0.79. And what happens if I multiply that by 10? Let's multiply that by 10. If I multiply it by 10, I just jump one column to the left. So everything goes into here now, and we can rub out that zero. So what's our new number? Our new number is 7.9. 7.9. What happens if I multiply 7.9 by a thousand? So what do we do if we're multiplying by a thousand? All digits jump three columns to the left. Three columns to the left. So a thousand, so one, two, three. But what do we have to do where those spaces have been left? We have to have place value holders. So this becomes 7,900. Okay, so that is how you multiply by 10, 100 and 1,000. And here is a blank table if you want to use it to help you do the classwork. So let me now show you what the classwork is. Oh, before we do that, let's just have a look at what Dora says. Dora says, when you multiply by 100, you should add two zeros. Do you agree and explain your thinking? Well, let's have a little look at an example. So if we had, for, uh, for example, 32 multiplied by 100, we know that in the place value table, this means it jumps two to the left. And that does give us the answer 3,200. And so you might think, well, yeah, she's right. You just add two zeros. But what about if we had 0 0.32 multiplied by 100. Remember, it's going to go two jumps in the place value table, and so, the, sorry, that's a zero there, two jumps in the place value table, and that actually just gets you to 32. So have you added two zeros there? No. Um, let's not talk about it in terms of adding two zeros, and we're just putting two zeros in the end. Yes, you can do that when you've got a number like this, but you've got to be really careful when you've got any kind of decimals or the decimal point is visible there. Okay, it's a movement in the place value table, two jumps to the left if you are multiplying by 100. And that just leaves you 32. So the answer to this is not, no, not really, not always. And you've got to be really careful when you are considering decimals. Okay, main classwork. Here is your main classwork. Write out the questions in your book and fill in the gaps here. This is for whole numbers. And then questions 9 to 13, you've got some decimals to consider. So write out this, draw out this table and fill in the blanks. So multiply this number here by 10. So this would be 57, for example. And then you're multiplying this original number 
by 100, okay? Not this number here, but you're multiplying 5.7 by 100. And getting your answer here. Okay, so that's the main classwork. If you want more of a challenge, then here are two extensions. Okay, good luck with that.